Hello, this is Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel, and I just want to explain a little thing about heat pumps in the UK because when people are watching our heat pump videos, they question a few of the things that I'm saying. And I just want to clear this up for people because when I'm confronted with that same argument over and over again, rather than me having to go through the whole tedious business every time, I can just click on this video and get them to watch it. So here you go, people who don't know what the UK is all about. What we're basically talking about here is two fundamentally different things. Air source and the other is ground source. Now, very often people call this geothermal. It is not geothermal. Geothermal is the hot springs in Iceland or places like that. And what ground source is relying on is basically solar. It's the solar energy. It's the sun heating the ground up and the ground stores a certain amount of energy and that is extracted by the heat pump. When people say that the ground is a much better proposition than the air because the ground stays at a constant temperature all year round, that is patently untrue. In my shower in the morning, for example, instantaneous one, the water comes through a much colder temperature in the winter than it does in the summer. And if you have a ground source heat pump and you have it in either a trench or a borehole, you have a pipe going down from the heat pump into the borehole and back up, and that's pumped, basically glycol being pumped around there. What that can very quickly do is to freeze the surrounding ground around it because it's extracting heat out of the ground. And when people say it's a constant temperature, it's not a constant temperature. When you've extracted that heat out of there, it has to be replaced somehow. It's replaced by the sun's solar rays, but it's also replaced by heat coming in from the surrounding ground to replenish it. And if you get a sufficient replenishment on that borehole, it will mean that it won't ever freeze. But that depends upon the ground itself. Sometimes the ground doesn't have a very good conductivity, so that heat from around there is very slow to replenish that borehole heat. Or sometimes it's got very good conductivity, in which case the heat will rush in from around there to top up supply. So these are things that have to be determined by a survey. They look at the ground, they look at the makeup of the ground, and they decide what you can do. Now, this has another bearing in that is if your neighbor also has a heat pump and they also have a borehole, then you can find obviously that the heat wants to go there, heat travels to cold every time, and you could find that this little bit in the middle starts to get very cold indeed and starts to freeze. So it's a consideration. Now you can also put heat pump collectors in trenches, what they call a slinky, where you just dig a trench maybe three feet deep or whatever, and you just run the pipe in there. And again, that will rely on the solar rays hitting the ground and warming the ground up and providing fresh heat for that heat pump as it's depleted from the ground. Now, because it's a much slower process replenishing the ground's heat, with the sun's rays, you'll find that it, you get a more even temperature. It won't necessarily fluctuate in as much as if you've got a warm day one day, a cold day the next. You won't find that your heat pump will be going up and down, up and down like that in terms of its coefficient of performance. The coefficient of performance is the amount of energy you put into it and the amount of energy you get out or heat. It doesn't matter which one you want to call it. Now, an air source heat pump works with a big fan that basically draws air through the heat pump and extracts heat from that air into a refrigeration coil. And that is basically taken inside the house and deposited in our heating system. Now, this is a fundamental misunderstanding that we get all the time. And this is really what I want to get to, is that people think the refrigeration circuit is in there and in there and inside they've got an evaporator there. That is actually what we call a mini split. And there are thousands and thousands, millions of those around the world working as air conditioning systems. But the British model is not like that. The British model is water that is coming out of that heat pump, being returned as cooler water, 
and then it's going into our heating system and it's going around either in underfloor heating or in radiators into the building. So it's a completely different principle to an air to air unit. Now people say, why don't you just get yourself a mini split because you can cool the air in the summer. You can have a cooler house in the summer with air conditioning and then you just reverse it round and then you've got heat coming in rather than cool. Now that's all very well and those things do work and they're not quite as efficient as this system, but they're not bad. But the British government will not allow a grant for those systems because it won't allow a grant for any heat pump, any system that has a cooling capability. And the reason for that is very simple because the whole purpose of this, as far as the government's concerned, is to cut our carbon emissions. And if you start heating the building in the winter and cooling it in the summer, you're not cutting your emissions, you're doubling your emissions. In other words, if you're relying on gas fired power stations, things like that to produce your electricity, then in the summer, you're burning gas to cool your building. Now, as we transition over to completely renewable electricity, if such a thing is ever possible, nuclear being part of the equation, I know people really hate the way I say nuclear, that's got to be run to produce electricity electricity to cool the building. So the government is set against that. And what we're trying to do in the UK is we've just introduced new standards into buildings where we're going to try and look at the cooling of the building passively. In other words, we've got to build so that the buildings don't get too hot. And that again is all about insulation. Everything these days is about insulation. Heat pumps work if you've got good insulation. Heat pumps don't work so well if you've got poor insulation. I hope that clears it up for a few people. There's a difference. We're talking ground source and ground source is not geothermal. We're talking air source, which is air to water, but it isn't air to air. I'm Roger Bisbee. Come back and see me soon. If you've got the stamina and the heart, I'll have more to rant about and lecture you on and, and thoroughly tell you off. Don't forget to sign up for the Skill Builder newsletter or you'll miss out on offers, giveaways, updates and everything else going on at Skill Builder. Follow the link to Skill Builder forward slash sign up and join our growing community.